Well, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today's episode, we're going to talk about backlashes, why we all hate them, and how to not get them for yourselves. And I'm going to teach you guys how to be able to do that every single time. Let's talk about it. Bait casting reel is something that scares a lot of people because they hear the horror stories of people getting bird's nest backlashes, rat's nest, whatever you want to call it, where you cast your reel and the line basically spools itself off the reel and has this huge big mess of knots that you have to try to take out. Now, if you guys are curious about how to get backlashes out effectively, I will have that video coming out in a few days. And if you're watching this video later on, it has already been out. So click up here in this corner if you guys want to see that video as a part of this two-part series. Setting up your reel. So when you get a reel from the store, you're most likely going to have the brakes set all the way to free or to zero, whatever your reel says, and the spool tension knob is probably loosened way the heck up. And so the reasoning for why uh, reel companies do that is not to mess you up when you first go out in the water because oftentimes I'll forget to set my spool tension knob and my braking system, I'll go to make a cast and we'll get a horrible backlash. The reasoning for why these companies uh, put basically all the settings super loose is that when you are feeling the reel in the store or you first get out of the box from tackle warehouse and you go to spin the knob or like spin the spool that thing will spin forever that's not actually how it's gonna be when you use the reel so they kind of want to trick you a little bit into thinking the reel is a little bit smoother and a little bit longer uh, spinning than it really is and so the first thing you want to do I don't care what you're throwing or how experienced you are you want to take that outside magnetic braking which most reels have most reels have a magnetic braking on the outside and a spool tension knob. Of course, the centrifugal braking uh, comes with you know the higher higher price reels. And so the first thing you want to do is take your brakes and you want to twist the brakes all the way to, in my experience, seven, eight, nine, somewhere in that general area, because you don't know exactly, especially if it's a brand new reel, how the reel is going to respond to being casted. So I like to turn my brakes not to max, not all the way on, but a good majority of the way on, because. The worst thing is you get out there in the water with some brand new floor carbon, you're excited to make a cast, and your first cast gets a backlash that you literally can't get out because it's so bad. So the first thing you want to do is take the brakes and move them all the way to seven, eight, or nine, or if, you're, if your reel says low, medium, high, move them somewhere in between medium and high. Now the second thing you want to do to set up your rod and reel is you want to take the bait off the, the, the hook hanger, and you want to adjust the spool tension knob. So I'm going to move the camera here, and hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing here. I am, I'm gonna take my spool tension knob, and I'm gonna twist it clockwise to tighten the spool tension knob until it gets pretty dang tight. I'm gonna open up the button, and I'm gonna let my bait fall. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure the bait can fall uh, at, a, at a very, very you know, slow speed and hit the ground without backlashing my reel. So I'm going to move closer to you guys. I'm going to get behind the camera here, and I'm going to show you guys. This is the spool tension knob. I'm twisting it here. That's counterclockwise to loosen it. Boop. You see that the bait is falling very fast. I'm going to tighten the spool tension knob until it gets really tight, and the bait literally, once I open the spool, the bait like does not fall off the reel. That is too tight. So I want to take this spool tension knob here and loosen it just until the bait being near the tip of my rod up there starts to fall very slowly. So right there. That is just about perfect, uh, in le at least in my experience, for what you want the, uh, the reel and the bait to be. And so I want to make sure that when I press that spool and I have that bait you know, pretty high up, maybe a foot down from the tip, and I press that button, the bait can fall and hit the ground without backlashing. Now this here is a little bit too tight, so I'm going to loosen it one more bump. I'm going to try it out here. And it's falling boom hits the ground and the uh, the reel did not backlash so that is my prime settings for how to tune a bait casting reel from the start and if you have those two things right you should be ready to rear back and make a cast look at that would you look at that now of course a situation is going to come up a lot of the days when you're out in the water and that is wind wind is what causes the majority of backlashes in your reels and it is because you have a a pressure coming against what you just cast it against. So when you are casting in a wide open, no wind pond like this, you can just let your reel spool out and not even use your thumb to stop it when it hits the water because you have your, your brakes set so perfectly. But when you have wind coming against you, you will have exerted force 
against the wind and the wind is exerting force back which is going to cause some kind of I don't know exactly how it works but pressure back on your line and it will start to backlash your line and so the one thing that you have to do is of course increase your brakes. So whether that is uh, tightening your spool tension knob on the right side by turning it clockwise, maybe uh, adding in more brakes on the magnetic, or if your reel has it, opening up the internal braking system. So the way that I do that is I open up the side plate. It's kind of hard to do on uh, some reels. And if you open up the side plate, you guys can see the magnetic portion of the braking system on the outside here, and then the centrifugal on the inside. And centrifugal braking is cool because it works on a centrifugal pin system. So the way the centrifugal force works, if you guys are not uh, physics people, which I'm not really either, but centrifugal force, like let's say you put marbles inside of uh, a pan or a, or a plate and you start to spin the plate, the marbles of course are gonna spin to the outside because just the way centrifugal force works, the heavier objects wanna work their way to the outside. And so that's the, exactly the way that centrifugal pins work on the inside braking system of a lot of bait casting reels, is that you have pins that you can either push or clip in to the inside of the reel, which means the braking is less because the pins can't spin outside. But if you have all the pins turned outside, when the reel is engaged and you cast out there and the spool is creating that centrifugal force, those pins are going to exert pressure on the spool and it's going to slow the spool down and so i really keep centrifugal uh braking systems on the inside of reels on halfway on halfway off so if i have four pins i'll turn two of them on and two of them off uh you know six pins eight pins vice versa but i'm just going to say this you don't need centrifugal braking or magnetic braking you just need two of the three so you do need a spool tension knob and that comes with every bait casting reel but you do not need both centrifugal and magnetic because honestly i never really touch centrifugal if you can get your settings in right with the magnetic and uh, the uh, the spool tension knob, you're going to be good to go. But of course, when wind comes, you're going to have to cast a little bit harder and turn the brakes on a little bit more. And I have one more little tip when it comes to setting up your reel, and it kind of actually jumps back to the line, is that you want to have your spool almost all the way filled up. As you can see here, my spool is almost all the way filled up, and that is for no other reason besides the fact that line spools off a reel a lot better and you get way more casting distance when you have a full spool. Now, the problem is when you overfill a spool, when you fill a spool past the little red, at least on this reel, the little red markings up here on the top, that line is going to come off the reel uh, at a rate that the reel is not designed for. The spool is not quite that big, and so the line is oftentimes going to get a backlash early on in the cast that will usually work its way out at the end of the cast. So you guys may have seen in my videos or people's videos across YouTube is that I'll make a cast, and you'll see on the chest mount, my line starts to spool up a little bit, and then I'll kind of use my thumb to what's called feather the reel, and then the, the line will kind of work its way out. And the last thing that I want to discuss is how to feather your reel with your finger. I may have discussed it at some point a little bit in today's video already, but when you make a cast, usually with like a big deep crankbait, like a 6XD, 8XD, some sort of, sort of deep heavy lure Carolina rig, is that your, your spool on your reel has a lot of tension on it. It is coming, maybe an Alabama rig is similar, it is coming off a super heavy loaded cast and you whip it out there and that spool is just shooting. So one thing that you have to learn to do in order to eliminate backlashes is to learn to feather your reel. One thing I see way too many people do when they first throw a bait caster is they, they whip back and they, they let the cast go and then they keep their thumb completely off the reel. And, and that's not gonna work. What I mean by feather is that when I make a cast, I'm gonna keep my thumb hovering very, very close to the spool, if not like my thumb literally touching the spool as it spools out. Which, which will not you know, inhibit your casting distance all that much, unless your thumb is of course like pressing down on it, then of course you know, your casting is gonna stop. But when you make a cast out there, and I've just learned to do this, it's muscle memory, you have to learn to keep your thumb very close to either A, eliminate a backlash. So if you feel your line is starting to shoot up and you don't wanna have to mess with the backlash, then of course you can stop the reel and, re and recast, maybe adjust your brakes if, if they weren't adjusted already. But I can't exactly explain the science behind it, but when you start to make a cast and you know your, your reel has a little bit of a backlash at the beginning of the cast, then if you put a little bit of pressure with your, your finger on the reel, oftentimes it can kind of reset and, and slow down that spool and can allow it to spool out the line that has started to shoot up out of the reel. So I'm gonna see if I can have an example of this. Right there, kind of feathering it, boom. 
and right there at the end, the line completely became unbacklashed. And it's one of those things that I can't explain how to do it. You just have to get out there, make sure you guys are keeping your thumb on your reel, not casting and letting it go. Now, of course, my settings are good for that, but that was a very, very short, very simple cast. If I'm gonna be whipping heavy lures out there, doesn't really apply to this finesse jig. I'm talking heavy, heavy stuff. You have to feather every single cast, which just takes time and uh, takes a little bit of acquired skill. So that is the video, folks. I hope that you enjoyed it. I always love to teach you guys uh, the, the little tips and tricks that I have learned over my fishing career so far to help you guys become better fishermen. Now, if you guys have any questions about backlashes and, and things of that nature, the comment section is always open for you guys to uh, drop a comment down below. I'm always down there answering questions as well as on my Instagram, Tyler's Real Fishing, if you guys will follow me over there. Also, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe if you guys like this sort of content. Uh, YouTube does not do a great job of sending out notifications, and so if you guys please, please can have notifications turned completely on uh, if you guys are on a desktop please bookmark the page I have three new videos every single week and trust me you guys are gonna want to see a lot of the videos I have planned for the spring of 2020 and beyond I'm very very excited about that but with that said if you guys of course have not seen uh, if you're watching this video later and you haven't seen the uh, how to get backlashes out once you have gotten them as we all do that video will be linked below as well and we'll see you guys on the next episode of TRF <laughs>